Hi there and welcome to uh, Cappuccino Conversations where we talk about innovation and all kinds of interesting things that's happening in the world. Uh, particularly at the moment we are celebrating the upcoming fifth um, Innovation Summit, the South African Innovation Summit. That's coming up on the 29th and 30th of August and uh, there's some fantastic speakers on the bill. And we're uh, very fortunate to be able to speak to a lot of those uh, speakers and I have at the moment um, Gary Wild with me. Gary, welcome. Thanks, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Um, Great to be here. I'm going to jump right in because I, I check, check out people's profiles on the summit's yes. uh, uh, website and it says that you're a turnaround specialist. That's right. Yes. Tell me what, is, what a turnaround specialist is. Okay, a turnaround specialist fi fixes things that are broken. Okay. Um, basically, I move into an organization where the organization or the, the a department within the organization is floundering, mm. it's not performing at its potential or it's, it's, it's possibly no longer feasible to operate. And what I do is I go in and, and turn it on its head um, and dismantle, uh, ex I examine the, 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 the structure of the mm. organization and get to understand why it's not performing. Okay. And then I basically go in and break all the rules Great. and redefine those rules so that they are, are relevant and, and, and generate efficiencies and, and produce results that are desirable. So I, in other words, that it become profitable again. Chaos kind of guy, I like that. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's what it's about. That's where some of the best innovation happens, isn't it? That's all um, about innovation. Okay, so now we get to the Innovation Summit and particularly, are you, yes. you, this is a, the subject matter you're going to be talking about? Yes, I'll be, I'll be talking about uh, deconstructive innovation great, specifically. Great. In, Tell in us in about that. What is deconstructive okay. uh, innovation? Nico, um, when we're trying to solve problems, very often people are so focused on the challenges and obstacles that lie ahead, um, they believe that those are the things that are holding them back from mm. achieving their, their potential and the best results and, and in business, the greatest profitability. But very often it's the things that are holding us back that are slowing us down right. from moving forward. Right. Okay. So it's not so much about the obstacles that lie ahead, but the the, 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 the breakdown the, the baggage that, that we're great, dragging great, along great. behind okay. us and and deconstructive innovation is is really just about um, rather than trying to define something new or novel to to create better outcomes mm. what you're doing is you you're examining existing conditions that may be holding the organization right, back. So it's kind of more of an internal sort of a probing kind of a yes yeah, so it's to look exercise. at well what are what okay. are the rules yeah. within the organization Mm. Um, and, and, and when I talk about rules, I mean policies, procedures, processes, controls, systems, as well as, so those are the formalized rules, but right. then you've also got the behavioral rules, the assumptions, the cultural idiosyncrasies, yeah. the, the, the personal biases, um, the, you know, it's, it's, it's all of those, those, those mental rules that we define for ourselves. That and govern they're not our real parameters, they just people just feel comfortable with parameters, isn't it? Correct. Well, yeah. we, we, we yeah. have to, in, in, in order for us to, uh, to be efficient at what mm. we do, we need to, to construct rules and, and create boundaries within mm. which to work mm. in order for us to be efficient. We, if we had to make a, a decision about whether to sleep on the left or the right hand side of the bed mm. every night or, or just which, which direction we go to work every day, it, 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 it overloads our thinking. Absolutely. So, okay. And every time you use the conscious mind, you're using more energy mm. Mm. than um, if you were just extracting a pattern from, right. from the past. This is fascinating. This okay. is great. So this, is, this looks like a really, really interesting uh, uh, talk and I think people should uh, go online. If you go online right now and you check out uh, uh, the, the link actually on your screen, um, you'll see uh, some of the speakers there and follow, follow Gary and just see what it is that uh, he's going to be talking about. Um, if I'm right in saying this, this year mm. the Innovation Summit is also going to open conversations with speakers beforehand. Uh, That's correct. So yes. you, you're actually going to be online talking to people beforehand and they can contact you right now? Yes, we, we've just been this. given the notification that the, the, the system is up and running and delegates are now able to start engaging with, with, the, with, the, speakers, with the speakers, which that's is really fantastic. great. Okay. Uh, I think that's, that's innovative in okay. itself. It is great. It is new. Hey, yes. I'm definitely going to go on online as well and, and, and see, see what conversation is going at the moment. Yes. Now, I've got to ask you, I mean, this is such an interesting thing, uh, this field that you're in in innovation. How did you get to be there or how did you get to discover this? Because most innovators did something else in their previous life. So, yes. I mean, you know, some were yes. singers, seamstresses, even, even we've been talking to. What, was, what did you do in your previous life? Well, I, I became a turnaround specialist by mistake. Okay. Okay. I, I started off studying, studying medicine. 
Okay. Um, oh. And uh, I, I didn't like the environment. Of the, uh, and I then I went into the, to the university environment mm. as well. And I was terribly frustrated by the pace. Mm. I, I didn't. I, w I went to study economics and finance and all okay. that stuff. And I, did, I didn't like going to one or two lectures mm. in a day. And I mm. wasn't into the party and prank culture of the okay. time. I wanted to get my teeth stuck into business. Mm. And so eventually I went with correspondence. Um, and I went to. I actually went to the, to Unisa and I said to them, I figured out a way to do four degrees in seven years. I mean, seven degrees in four years. Fantastic. Okay. And they told me I was smoking something. <laughs> uh -huh. So, but already by that stage, I realised okay, I was a bit different to to the, to, to the average person out yeah. there. And very quickly got into the corporate space, and um, I, I started working in the blue chip environment. And I just found I had a knack for solving problems. It's, uh, okay. I've always been obsessed with solving problems my yeah. whole life. Yeah. And so I've worked in every functional area of business. And I was forever being pulled out of my roles to come and solve problems, whether it was an engineering problem or a finance problem or a tax problem to, uh, to a systems problem. Yeah because of the very unusual way that I go about solving those problems because my, 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 my key um, strategy is to get to the root of the problem rather right. than just look at the superficial, superficial mm, elements yeah, yeah. that may be pointing in a different direction yeah. um, to where the real problem is lying. Great. And so the, the kind of solutions that I've developed in the past have been very sustainable. Fantastic. And um, so yeah, I've been, I, I was just, a, Eventually, I was uh, in an environment where, in a big blue chip environment, where the guys were looking for someone who was going to help turn a, uh, an operation around where they hadn't been able to do so in 27 years sure. with their best ops guys. And these were very skilled uh, mm. people. And this is also when you realize how different a turnaround specialist is to your traditional leader. Because um, when it's I a went different in, skill set. totally, totally Surely, different yeah. skill set, yeah. you know, and you have a, the same technical knowledge mm. of business, mm. but you also have a very, very good understanding of causality, and you have a good understanding of human behavior, and that's there one of my core skills. This is another another field of yours, right? That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I've been studying for twenty five right. years. Wow. Um, it's behavioral, my passion. Behavioral sciences. Correct. Okay. Do you want so to tell us a bit about that as well? This is oh well, the, this is such a magic wide, field yeah. of study because every single outcome we see happening in the world around us is as a result of behavior. Yeah. If you sure. take human behavior out of the equation, nothing happens, mm. okay? So when we, when we see a result in, in business, leadership, or life that is not desirable, what we need to do is look back and say, well, wh what was the behavior that brought about that, uh, that right. result? Yeah. And then it's to go beyond that and say, well, what brought about that, that behavior. behavior to begin with. So then you go and see, well, what are the rules that govern our behavior? Because mm -hmm. the rules that govern our behavior determine our, the decisions we make, which determine the behaviors, exactly. which determine and the outcome. You, and if you can change those, correct. You so can the world. how do you change those rules? Fantastic. And very, very few people understand how to change those rules. Yeah. And that's what I do. I, I get into people's heads and I help them rewire their map and their blueprint to be more relevant Indeed. and appropriate to their environment so that you channel the the, the, the rules and the, the thinking and the behavior and the decisions that people make to ensure that you get mm. the desired outcome. Mm. You see, you, you cannot, you cannot um, expect to get a different result within the same set of rules that created the, exactly. the undesirable result. Exactly. So You'll be going in a loop. That's yeah. why uh, you know, I go right back to what is it that, what are those unconscious rules? Because mm. the rules that we operate by as individuals are mm. all very unconscious. Mm. They've been programmed into us through our mm. lifetime. Mm. People don't know why they necessarily... Why they behave in a certain way. Correct. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then within the work environment, mm. many of the rules that are in place, so your systems, processes, procedures, policies, etc., and the controls, many of those were created in a, in a legacy environment. So yes, right. they were appropriate mm. in the day, but today in a different world, in different technology, different culture, those rules are no longer relevant, yet people continue to do so. And you say, well, why are you doing that? No, because we've always done it that way. And certainly innovation is asking us to Correct. change in a big way. Exactly. This is fantastic. So it's okay. a, and and yeah. that's why I developed um, a, a process called uh, Future Relevance, mm. um, where I help organizations and leaders build future relevance into the organization. So it's not just about mm. being relevant today. It's what are you doing to develop your skill set now to ensure you're competitive tomorrow. Great. 
Great. So it's to be staying ahead of those trends, I measure future relevance and then develop it as well. Fantastic. And this is all going to be in your talk. That's going to be awesome. I, I, I cannot put it all in yeah. the talk because the talk is going <laughs> to be really huge. interesting yeah. around deconstructive yeah. innovation. Fantastic. Some of the, the, yeah. the, uh, the anecdotes I'll be using are, are going to be very interesting. Mm. Um, I talk about how the assumptions we, we make can keep us inside patterns okay. of undesirable outcomes and how to break that down. Great. And I use specific industry examples um, w where people have made some really big assumptions mm. about w why things are the way they are. Mm. They therefore govern their or they design their business around that assumption mm. Mm. and then wonder why they're not getting the kind of okay. results that they so want. Some, some case studies also. That's Correct. fantastic. Yes. Well, it certainly looks great. Have a fantastic uh, session. We're looking forward to seeing it there. Thanks for joining us. Sure. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to being at the summit. Okay, so uh, do some prep work at this stage. And uh, thanks to Gary Wild. Uh, do some, some prep work. Make sure that you make contact and start those conversations up front. Uh, thanks for watching uh, Cappuccino Conversations. Till another time, goodbye.